Hi everyone, so we are uh, on this topic uh, radiographic testing and uh, in last few lectures uh, we have seen the different aspects of this particular technique and we have also learned about how the image is formed on x-ray film. Okay? And then uh, in the last uh, lecture we talked about uh, the different kinds of intensifying screens which are used uh, to enhance the quality of the image. Okay? So, in uh, today's lecture also we are going to take up uh, this image quality again because there are few more things particularly uh, related to the x-ray source uh, which will control the quality of the image and that is what we are going to talk about in today's lecture. Okay? So, the quality uh, with uh, regard to the film properties, uh, how the film properties uh, control the quality of the image, all those things we have seen before as I said. So, today let us see what are those parameters uh, related to the x-ray source which will control the quality of the image and what can you do to get the best quality. So, let us see uh, what is image quality and uh, how it is affected by the x-ray source and then uh, we will see uh, what can be done uh, to get the best uh, quality image out of an x-ray machine. If you uh, do not uh, have the right parameters or the right uh, focal spot size uh, in a given x-ray machine, then uh, the image uh, that you get will not be very sharp. Okay. the quality of the image will not be at its best. So, this inability of the, uh, of the instrument or uh, the x-ray radiation uh, to reproduce uh, the best quality image is known uh, what is called as unsharpness, sometime which is also called as penumbra. So, this can be defined as the inability to properly reproduce uh, the boundary of an object. or the minimum distance uh, between two objects that can be dissolved. For example, if you have an object and if you have a sharp change uh, like this, a sharp 90 degree change in the curvature or in some section of the object. Then uh, if your x-ray machine is not able to reproduce this uh, sharp boundary properly, it will give you a diffuse boundary like this instead of this sharp change. So, this sharp change will uh, look as a gradual change like this. Okay, so, that means uh, you had this uh, boundary where there was a 90 degree change, but uh, when you see the image, uh, you do not see that uh, sudden change, rather it comes out as a gradual change. Okay? So, this uh, inability to uh, reproduce uh, this boundary properly as we defined just now is known as the unsharpness of the image. Okay? And this primarily happens uh, 
due to the focal spot size of the machine. So, X-ray machines uh, come with a uh, focal spot uh, which is having a finite size and uh, it is not a point source. right? So, when you have a focal spot uh, with a given size, uh, it will act as a multiple point source. Okay? So, if you have a point source like this, then you know that uh, there is only one X-ray source uh, from where all the X-ray beams are coming out and they will go through the sample and uh, produce the shadow of the sample or the image that you see on the X-ray film. So, if uh, this be the point source and let us say you have an object like this and there is a feature like this on the object. And if it is a point source, uh, so you know that uh, these rays are coming from only one point and going through this object and the boundaries of the object. And as a result, uh, when you keep the film here, you can uh, reproduce uh, the boundary exactly like this. So, this is actually the density plot that you see on the image because you are collecting the photographic density from different parts of the object and that is what is being uh, shown on the X-ray film image as contrast. Okay. So, if it is a point source, uh, there is no difficulty in uh, reproducing the boundary of an object as you could see here. But if it is a finite size source, then uh, because of that given size, uh, it will act as multiple sources. Okay. For example, if you have a source like this, so this has a given size. Okay. So, this is the spot size f. So, it has multiple points because it's a, it has a certain size. So, uh, if you now take the same object and image it uh, using this particular source which is not a point source, then it will look like this. So, now the x-rays will come from different points, let us say we will just take up two points from here and from this point also for this boundary. Similarly, uh, for the other boundary from this point also it will come and it will come from the other points also like this. Okay. And as a result of that, when you see the density plot on the film, this sharp boundary will appear as a diffused one like this. So, you will not see that sharp change which is there in the boundary rather it will appear as a gradual change like what we have seen in this case also. So, this is uh, due to the size of the uh, x-ray source or the focal spot size okay? and this particular uh, phenomena is known as unsharpness. And since it is uh, related to the geometry of, uh, of the source, it can be defined by a geometric uh, parameter. So, if you simply take the ray diagrams now, uh, you would be able to uh, get an expression uh, for this. So, let us say this is the source. with a spot size of f and then you have the object. So, again because of its size, 
uh, it will act as multiple point source like this. So, the rays will come from multiple points and on the film this is how the density data will appear. So, let us say this is A and this is B. So, since uh, the rays are coming from multiple points, uh, for point A you would see if it comes from two points, you will see for a single point of the object, you will get two different points on the image like this for point A and similarly for point B, you will get uh, more than one point on the image. Okay. So, this uh, particular phenomena as we have already defined is the unsharpness. And it can be easily found from this geometry and since it is related to the size or the geometry of the source, it is also uh, known as geometric unsharpness. which is indicated as U g. So, this is the U g and if you consider this ray diagram and the geometry over here. So, if you consider uh, this triangle, this one and uh, the other one, this one. So, the height for uh, the first triangle, this one is uh, the distance between the source and the object which we will call as L naught and the height for the second triangle is the distance between the object and the fill which uh, we will indicate as small l. So, now if you apply the triangle rule here for this two particular triangle, then you have base by the height of the first triangle will be equal to the base which is A for the second triangle by the height which is L naught. Okay. So, from here uh, you get an expression for U g. So, this depends on these three parameters. So, from here you can see how the quality or the sharpness of the image uh, will depend on these parameters and when you vary one of them, uh, the quality or the sharpness of the image will vary. Our objective is to get the best quality image uh, and therefore, uh, this U g has to be minimized. Okay. And according to uh, this particular equation, we can see that U g can be minimized if you could minimize f uh, keeping the other two same. For a particular uh, focal spot size, uh, you can either minimize L that is the distance between the object and the film or you can maximize L naught. Okay. So, these are the three choices that you have to uh, minimize the unsharpness and get the base quality image. Okay. Now, uh, for a given machine once you have a particular equipment uh, for that uh, the spot size is fixed because every machine comes with a particular spot size and you have to uh, use that uh, to get you know all the images. So, that means for a given machine uh, your uh, f uh, is fixed for a given source and a given equipment. So, that means the other two parameters that you have to play around uh, are these two distances L and L naught. Okay. So, if you maximize L naught that is the distance uh, between the source and the object uh, then your U g will be minimized. 
But the problem with that is if you increase the distance between the source and the object, uh, the intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Okay? So, you will compromise uh, with the intensity. Okay? If you uh, increase the distance for example, uh, by double your intensity will decrease by uh, 4 times. Okay? So, that is why uh, it is also difficult to change this uh, distance between the source and the object. So, that leaves us uh, with this distance, the distance between the object and the film to change it uh, and minimize it to minimize the uh, unsharpness. Okay? So, that means the film and the object, uh, the distance between them should be minimum and it will be best to keep the object and the film in that case in intimate contact. Okay? So, that this distance L naught sorry this distance L is minimized. Okay? So, in this case when you keep them in contact L will be simply the thick thickness of the film T f plus the thickness of the sample or of the or the object T s. Okay? So, since uh, the film and the object are in contact, this is also known as uh, contact radiography. Right? So, this is how uh, for the same uh, for, for a given uh, a spot size by keeping the film uh, in close contact with the uh, object, uh, the unsharpness can be minimized. And that is why uh, the uh, sample is kept uh, right over the film uh, with the help of a sample holder which I am going to show you a little later. So, that uh, this uh, distance between the object and the film is minimized. So, if you talk about the spot size, the conventional uh, radiographic uh, sources that you have the size uh, generally varies uh, from 1 to 4 mm. Okay, so, this is uh, the size range in which uh, the machines come which are generally used for uh, industrial radiography. And if you want to uh, have a smaller uh, spot size, then you have to go for this uh, mini focus instruments in which uh, the spot size is in the range of uh, sub millimeter from 0.2 to 0.5 millimeter. Okay. If you want to go to further down and want to get a uh, source uh, which is uh, almost like a point source, uh, in that case you need to go for a micro focus unit. Where the spot size is in the micron range from 1 to 50 micron. So, this kind of uh, uh, mini focus or micro focus uh, sources may be needed for uh, certain purposes uh, for certain uh, special requirements, but the commonly used ones that we use uh, for industrial radiography will be having a finite size like this. But the point source will have its uh, own advantages because it will uh, it will not give you any unsharpness in the image at all. Okay. And it will also uh, allow you to uh, magnify the image. If you want to magnify the image uh, in this case when you have a finite uh, spot size. Okay. So, when you uh, magnify the image means it, the distance between uh, the film and the object also increases. So, for a finite uh, 
source we have already seen uh, how the image is formed. So, in this case if you want to magnify the image then you have to increase the distance between the object and the film and as you could see from here if you increase this distance then this unsoftness is also uh, going to increase. Okay. So, that is why in this case uh, there is no question of uh, magnification, but on the other hand if you have a point source then in this case uh, there is no uh, question of any on sharpness. So, if even if you increase this distance it will only get magnified without the image quality being compromised. Okay. So, for point source or for micro focus you have an advantage of magnification. and this is known as projection radiography if you magnify the image. And this magnification mg is given by these distances. So, this is the advantage uh, that you have. The other advantage uh, that you have in case of point source uh, is what is known as uh, depth of focus. Which means up to what depth uh, can you focus the sample uh, for a single exposure. So, if it is a finite source, finite uh, size source then uh, and if you have an object like this, So, if you have uh, features like this uh, which are within this uh, field of view they can only be focused. Okay. So, you cannot uh, really focus two features uh, together one which is at the top and if another one is there uh, close to the bottom uh, these two cannot be focused uh, together uh, for a um, finite size source. So, it has a limited depth of focus. On the other hand if you have a point source since in from the point source uh, the rays are going to come like this. whatever comes within this uh, this region 
will be focus. So, you can see from almost from top to bottom of the sample, uh, you can uh, focus in a single exposure itself. Okay. So, this provides you uh, a better depth of focus uh, compared to a finite size source. So, that is the other advantage that you have if you use a point source or a micro focus source. Okay. So, when the image is uh, magnified by uh, using uh, point source, the other name for that is uh, X-ray microscopy because this uh, magnification comes into picture when we talk about uh, microscopy where you have lenses uh, through which you can magnify the image. Okay. So, in this case also since the point source allows you to do, uh, it allows you to magnify the image, this is also known as X-ray microscopy. Okay, so, this is how uh, the size of the focal spot uh, will control the quality of the image. So, with this uh, we come to the end of uh, this particular lecture today. Throughout this whole week we have been discussing about radiographic testing. So, it will be good to uh, take a summary of uh, what we have learned in this week. So, let us uh, take the summary of this week's lectures. First, we learned about uh, the basic principle of radiographic testing. where we saw that it is primarily based upon the absorption of X-rays which is due to matter and X-ray interaction. Then we derived an expression for this absorption phenomena which is like this. Okay. And as I said before, this forms the basis for radiographic testing. Okay. And this matter X-ray interaction in with regard to that particular phenomena, we saw there are different atomic scattering events which lead to the absorption of X-rays and in this we have seen different types of atomic scattering events and we have also discussed about their contributions to radiographic testing. And once we understood uh, the basic uh, principle of uh, radiographic testing, we discussed about uh, the image formation and in this we saw that you first need an X-ray source which is nothing but X-ray tube and about that X-ray tube also we have discussed uh, when we discussed in the beginning about the generation of X-rays. And the other thing that you need for capturing the radiographic image is the X-ray film. And we have discussed in detail about the X-ray film its uh, construction and its uh, constituents, how it is made and what is the main constituent in these X-ray films that also we have discussed. Then we talked about the characteristics of the X-ray film. like the photographic density D
the contrast C s and we also saw that for every film there is a film characteristic curve. And from this curve you can again derive some film characteristics or film properties and those were the gradient G the film latitude and we have also seen how to calculate film speed from this characteristic curve. Okay. And we have seen that there are primarily two types of uh, curve, one is uh, S shaped and the other one is J shaped. In the J set category, we also saw that there are three types of films 1, 2, and 3, and in the S set category, there is type 4 film. After that, we talked about intensifying screens. The basic purpose of which is to filter out the scattered uh, radiation which is not desirable for forming the image and also to enhance the efficiency of image formation. So, these are the two primary objectives of using an intensifying screen. And we saw that there are two types of intensifying screen. One is uh, metal screens and the second one is fluorescent salt screens. After that, uh, we discussed about image quality. and the parameters which control the image quality and with regard to those parameters we learned that uh, certain parameters come from the x-ray source for example the focal spot size will affect the quality of the image and with regard to that, we learned about an aspect called unsharpness. which comes due to the finite size of the focal spot of an X-ray source. And the image quality would also depend on the properties of the film and the parameters which influences the quality of the image with regard to the film that also we have discussed. So, with regard to the film as we have discussed you need a high G 
a high value of gradient and you need fine graininess. Okay, so, these are the things that we have learned so far about uh, the X-ray radiography technique and the rest of the things that we have for this particular technique will be taken up in the future lectures. So, for today this is all I have. Okay. So, I am going to stop here today. Thank you for your attention.